Well, the Rockford Ice Hawks 2018 called a cup playoff run, unfortunately came to a close of the hands of the Texas Stars. But don't you worry. We promised you championship hockey in Rockford once again. Hello, everybody. Joseph Zakczewski with you. And I'm joined alongside a very special guest for this evening's Ice Hogs Rewind and a general manager of the year in the ECHL. But he was also the bench boss for your Ice Hogs back in 2007, leading him to a UHL championship in Steve Martinson. Is that game seven against the Kalamazoo Wings is tonight's featured Ice Hogs Rewind. And Steve, great to catch up with you. We see you all throughout Rockford throughout the summers, too. Last time I caught up with you was at City Market. Yeah. A little different scenario now. I'm broadcasting my basement. You're in your living room. We're kind of confined no, to our I'm, spaces. I'm in my but, office. Oh, Yo, you're in your I'm office. Sure. Okay, that, even better. I, I, but unfortunately, we're not guess, at the rink right now. Normally, we'd be in the middle of a playoff push. How are you holding up with the stay-at-home orders? You just got back into town in Rockford. So uh, how have you been? Good, sir. Yeah, you know, I, I I I wear my mask most of the time when I go out, but you know, I've I've been my wife and I we don't go out much anyway, so it hasn't really been a big adjustment. And once we get up to Rockford, you know, the, we always tell everybody if we can't get there by boat, don't invite us. So, you know, we have an island that we spend a lot of time on. So once we get here, we don't really go anywhere anyway. So usually go to the rink, but that's obviously kids can't play right now, so even that's out. Well, congratulations to you. Unfortunately, the ECHL season was cut short, but you earned the ECHL General Manager of the Year Award with the Allen Americans. Another quality year with Allen for you. I mean, what was it like to receive that award? I know you had a record-breaking team once again. Unfortunately, uh, the playoff push was not meant to be, but certainly thrilling to be recognized by the coaching staff that voted you as GM of the Year. Yeah, you know, it feels good because it's the coaches that vote for it, so. You know, I mean, when, when you get it from, you know, your own people, it's it's kind of a little bit better, I think. But, um, you know, really, it's a kind of reflection. And you guys saw one of my best players, Gabe Godin. You, you know, that when you when you have success as a coach or a GM, it's really because your players have done a really good job. And and we had some great players, and, and uh, they were fun to watch and fun to coach. Well, Gabriel Gagne worked wonders right from the very first game. He was in a nice uh, yeah. uniform, scoring right away, and, and he's earned himself a deal now uh, getting ready for what could be the rest of this year, if not the beginning of next year. So just one of the many young players that you have helped shape uh, to help out the Rockford Ice Hogs here this day. But for you this year, I don't want to call it a bounce-back year because you've only missed the playoffs twice in your entire yeah. coaching career. But the season before with Allen, you only had 25 wins. So to have this kind of turnaround so quickly had to be rewarding for you personally. You know what? It, it's kind of weird. You know, it, it's it's you, it, sometimes I guess it's in the cards, but we had so many good players get hurt that we had five forward season ending injuries in the first eight games. And I've never seen anything like that. And it was like, it was kind of our quality, you know, go to glue guys and, and, and all top players. So the guys that replaced them with, you know, some of them weren't great defensively. It wasn't really a, a group that you, you know, the guys that we built the team around were all the guys that got hurt. So it was a painful – I thought we were going to come back. We made some deals, and, and then our goaltending really hurt us when, when our goalie got called up. So it was a – trust me, it was a tough year. It was a painful year, and one I don't like to really talk about. Well, you had a great year this year, and in fact, looking at your more personal accolades for you, uh, you became now the second winningest coach in North American pro hockey history. Now, 1,043 wins. You only have to track down the legendary Hall of Famer, Scotty Bowman, who's got 1,200 and change on you, but now you move up another rank. I read a couple articles. You mentioned that you're more focused on team accolades and team championships, but at the end of the day, were you able to th sit back and think of that accomplishment, moving to second all-time in pro North American history, and maybe think about what the next few seasons have in the, in the tank for you, and maybe you could challenge that record. Yeah, you know, it wasn't until I, I thought maybe I'd switch gears and get into, you know, move back up here and maybe get into scouting and stuff, but um, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to stay with coaching and, and, uh, you know, I, I tell Stan that I'm coming after his dad now. So, um, obviously he's, you know, I have, I have the, the Rockford Ice Hawks had a giveaway, you know, a, a, a bobblehead and one of the, one of them's left at my house. Cause you know, one of the players left it here and I, I have that in my office. So I have conversations with Scotty Bowman once in a while and he doesn't even know it. <laughs> Well, again, congratulations, and uh, you're going to try and track him down as best you can. We look forward to doing that. But, again, moving up the ranks this year, passing up legendary ECHL and just a legend of the game and Coach John Brophy to move into second place. So, I mean, you're, yeah. you're in some pretty I good company you, there, good though, sir. Brophy, 
Rofi, uh, Rofi and I didn't like each other too much. He, he, he uh, one time I, I got in a fight right in front of their bench uh. in St. Catharines and it was so funny. He, the penalty box was next to their bench and he came up with his big goofy smile and his, and his you know, his bangs, blonde haired, gray bangs. And he's standing behind, you know, the legendary Val James and he's grinning at me and he's pointing at Val. He's going, Hey, Martinson, guess who you're fighting next? And, uh, so I mean, I have he he always had tough teams, and uh, I, I think I had more fights against that guy's that guy's team than anybody. So that's one guy I didn't mind passing up. <laughs> or if I run into him someday, maybe in, you know if they if they if they really have those hockey games somewhere, I always say Valhalla would work for me. And you know, I like to get a hold of him in a hockey game and maybe smack him around a little bit. But that'll be <laughs> we'll have to see if that's if we're going to be able to do that. Playful rivalry on and off the ice between you and, and Mr. Brophy. Well, again, congratulations on the accomplishment. And let's go ahead and dive into the tonight's Ice Hogs Rewind. So thankful that you are yeah. a special guest this evening. I know a lot of fans excited to watch Game 7 of the 2007 UHL Colonial Cup Finals. By this time, when you were the head coach of the Ice Hogs, it was your third season, but you were already a five-time league champion, five championships with San Diego. You get the one with Rockford, then you move on and win another giant handful with all other organizations, especially the Allen Americans, whether it's the ECHL or the Central Hockey League. But walk us through, I guess, the preparation for this season. You had another fantastic regular season. You cruised through the first rounds, Fort Wayne and Quad City, no problem there, combined 8-2 and two record. And then you go in against Kalamazoo, a team that you know well from the regular season, but it seemed like this was going to be a different kind of series. And it looked like it by the results with the home team doing so well. But as a prep in preparation as yeah. a coach trying to deliver the first championship in, in, in city history and team history, that's a tough task to put on your shoulders. And you know, you know what, 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 I'm not sure everybody remembers, but we had the youngest team that ever won a championship in the Colonial League. And, and we really had like an ECHL team. We were loaning players. And, you know, when we beat Fort Wayne, um, you know, we only finished a point behind them and we lost the first game. And they thought, you know, they were getting them, but we just pounded them and, and pound them. And they had an older team and, and, uh, you know, Reed's from, from Kalamazoo and made a comment once when he was coaching in Missouri. He said, uh, or excuse me, one of the, he wasn't coaching in Missouri. One of the guys that you know, he was trying to recruit was looking at going to Missouri. And he said, well, okay, go in that division and have to play against Rockford, you know, all season. And back then we had Johnson and Big Snake and Watson and Caleb Betts. We had a lot of guys that really, that could play, but really hammered teams. And, and, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, reflected when I was just thinking tonight. I, you know, reminded me, we really had a young team, and Kalamazoo had an older team. And, you know, we were under the salary cap at times that year because we loaned so many players. So um, I think it was, you know, it was a different type of style, but uh, they had a great team. I mean, they, they had some veteran guys and, and a lot of guys with that AHL experience. And we had a lot of guys kind of looking to move up at the time. And, and uh, it was two different types of teams. What was it like moving into a game at seven? You're back at home at the Rockford Metro Center, now BMO Harris Bank Center. The home team has won every game in the series so far, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. You go to Kalamazoo, they took care of business in their building. You come back to Rockford, you did pretty well in, in the uh, first couple of games there. But game seven, it, it doesn't matter what the record is and, and how I'm seeing professional sports. Pretty much take everything off the table. It's, it's do or die and then just the battle of attrition and wills at that point. You know, it, it home ice, and it, it's depending on how balanced your team is. You know, you get the last change, and it and it and it's different than the NHL because you have four lines. It's a little bit, little bit different animal to you know to, in matching your defense against the top lines. But at, at, at our level, it's three three lines against three, and you know three sets of D. And I think we were going five D at times there. Um, you know, the rosters were, were much smaller than the American League, so we could only dress six defensemen and, and uh, ten forwards. And then I think we were only allowed to carry 21 players. Like, we had to drop guys that were here all year. They had some crazy rules back then. But, um, you know, going against Kalamazoo, they had that veteran. They had some really good veteran players. And I remember, you know, I don't want to jump ahead, but when we scored with about a minute and a half to go, Corbyll scored in. And I remembered we'd had those guys down several times during the year, and they'd pull the goalie and score. And they had six 
you know, I remember all the players now. If I went back and, you know, watched the game, I, but when, when we got that seventh, that, that third goal to go up and, and it was a huge crowd. And I think, you know, you could just hear the screaming and, and, you know, when I came to Rockford, you know, it was, I had my, my work cut out for it. Cause when I, when I was rec recruiting, it was a lot different than recruiting to San Diego. So, um, it was really, you know, felt good about, you know, knowing that I was going to be leaving and, and keeping my house here. And, you know, it was a place that I wanted to come back to in the summertime. So it was a good feeling. And I think the crowd, I mean, that last minute and a half after Corbill scored was the loudest I can remember. Well, and you walked us right into the game, which is what I was going to dive into. You get the game's opening goal, a shorthanded goal to get things started pretty early on. Then Kalamazoo comes back and scores. You go up 2-1, to one, but still the puck can bounce any which direction, and then you get the uh, the sealer right there, right at the very tail end. And then a lot of fans bring up – the second goal – I'm sorry, go ahead. So, so the, the second goal, you know, we got the – we. Jason Norderman was a really scrappy guy and, and he wasn't a real big guy, but he was really a greasy, greasy player. And the puck was in front of the net and he went to the net. And that's one of the things that he did. Well, I think he only weighed 180 pounds and he went to the front and it just kept hacking and whacking at the puck. And then you see him jump up and, you know, you can't see the puck from, from the bench, but when you see the player jump, you know, you're just looking to say, okay, they're keeping that as a goal. And, uh, because I don't think we were always getting the best calls at that time. Uh, you know, there was times in the United League that that uh, I questioned some of the officiating. But anyway, it was uh, to see Norderman get that goal and get the lead, you know, you felt good going in the third period. Well, it's funny, Brie. I, when I watched back and I was listening to Mike Peck on the broadcast and I watched that goal too, the hacking and whacking, and then it trickles over the goal line and seeing the linesman sprint in there from way out on the angle, I kind of wondered that too. I was like, well, are they going to blow it dead or how are they going to work that out? But yeah. it turned to uh, work out pretty well for you guys in the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was just, but it was a vintage. If, if you knew Norderman, it was just, a, just the way that, that he played. He was just a greasy, you know, hard-nosed guy and – Went to the net and got it done. Well, another memory that a lot of fans bring up, too, outside of the goals being scored and how energetic that building was, was towards the very tail end, the game was almost in hand. It wasn't quite over yet, but Chaz Johnson decides to put on a little dancing show at center ice. As a yeah. uh, coach, I can't imagine – I don't know. What were your thoughts when you, when you saw that? Because I feel like in today's day and age, if you were to do that, you probably have to, to answer to somebody in some way, shape, or form down the line. But to watch Chaz Johnson put on a little line dance at center ice in front of everybody with only a few moments left had to be uh, an interesting moment for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but Ch Chaz was a huge part of our yeah, – I think he was a first-year player that year. I can't remember if it was the second year. Might have been a first or second year. I can't remember if he was – he was. He might have been signed by by uh, Milwaukee, or I know he ended up signing later with with our affiliate. But you know, he was a he was an electrifying player, and we had you know we had Watson Watson who was like a like a big Mack truck, and Johnson I used to say was like the torpedo, and uh, you know they when when they opened up the game and everybody said okay you know it was gonna it's gonna be just an offensive game the guys that could really skate and hit. You know, like those guys, nobody could hold them up anymore. So, um, you know, our team back then, you know, if it, it was is a, it was more like St. Louis. Like I loved that St. Louis won the Stanley Cup last year because I always said it's you know they they played macho hockey and you know they their offensive players were were really good offensively and everybody chipped in physically and obviously the third and fourth line guys you know led the way but their their top guys were you know were also hitting and hard to play against and. I thought that was the, you know, when, when my teams have won and but done well, I just tell people that's the way we play. That's the way, you know, the way St. Louis played. And, and that's the way that team was. That team was, you know, we were tracking down. I remember when we beat Fort Wayne, and like I said, that they went up the first game, but we knocked the ever-living crap out of their defensemen. And, you know, three games into the series, they didn't want to go back and get the puck anymore. No. And I don't blame them, too, with the size. And it's kind of a, a hockey style of a bygone era, given today's size and or, uh, speed and skill over the, the size and the hitting aspect. But certainly a lot of fun to watch that game seven. Now, the celebration has begun. The trophy is handed out. Coach, you win your sixth championship at the time, sixth of now ten league championships in your career. 
it's hard to rank them. It's like ranking your children, but where does this one sit for you? And, and it must mean something special knowing how strong your connection is here to the state line community. Yeah. You know, you know, what, what, what was different here is they hadn't really had, you know, they hadn't been winning before that. And, and I think, you know, we were kind of the hard, you know, the, you know, not the, the, the fairy tale. You like San Diego is a little bit different because it's San Diego. It's a different place to recruit to. And, the different, you know, you know, it's a different lifestyle there. And, and, you know, I think everybody really appreciated winning and uh, the type of team that we won with, I think was a, you know, reflection of, of the area. So, you know, it felt good that, you know, knowing that, you know, it was my last year here and, and, you know, I thought we, the first year we had a pretty good team. The second year we had some injuries and we went up against the second year that that's when Danbury was in the league and they were about 500 grand over the salary cap. And there was a there was a lot of stuff going on, and and Kalamazoo was like a hundred grand over the cap, and we were like ten thousand under because we'd loaned so many players, and uh, they had a they had a deal that year where they said we were going to do a, a luxury tax, and uh, Kalamazoo said they weren't paying it because they knew what other teams were paying, and I didn't want to get in a sidetrack with that, but you know our, our team was completely different. It was a young team, and you know, a lot of guys had come from the coast because they were protected by teams and couldn't get a race. So it was, it was a lot different, but it was a really good, you know, culmination of, uh, of coming here and knowing that I'd be leaving, but with the idea of coming back someday. Well, Coach Martinson, again, I cannot thank you enough for sharing your memories of this 2007 uh, UHL championship with the Ice Hogs and the Colonial Cup finals against Kalamazoo. Uh, it's going to be a fun Ice Hog rewind tonight. I know our fans are looking forward to it. And we're also going to be rebroadcasting our conversation and the game again on the actual anniversary, which will be on May 24th. So keep an eye out for that one as well. But, Coach, again, congratulations, ECHL General Manager of the Year. You move into second, the second winningest coach in North American professional hockey history. It just gets better for you. Hopefully we can get back to the rink soon, and we look forward to seeing you rack on a few more wins uh, now moving into another year for you. Thanks, Joe. And I think I'll be – I might be watching that game. I don't think I've watched that game since uh, – in fact, I don't think I've ever watched it. I think I just saw some highlights of it. So I might be tuning in on Friday night for that game too. Friday night, 6 o'clock. We look forward to it. Well, Coach, thank you so much. Right. And have a wonderful night. And everybody, enjoy tonight's Ice Hogs Rewind. Thanks, Joe.